Does the new Abrams tank stand a chance against most modern Russian tank, T-14 Armata? And by Abrams, I mean the most modern variant, M1E2 SEP with 3 which entered production last year. Now, neither of those tanks entered actual service, but are expected to by 2020. Armata is more modern design, but that does not mean Abrams is completely inferior to it. Let's analyze everything before making a conclusion. M1A2 SEP V3, like Armata, has improved fire control system with third generation thermal imaging system, which means both tanks are equal in that. But firepower of Abrams faces some problems. M1A2 SEP V3 uses improved version of M256 gun, which is modified version of German L44 developed in the late 70s. A newest armor piercing, fin stabilized discarding saber projectile for M1A2 SEP V3 is MA29A4, with ammunition data link designed to take out threats equipped with relic explosive reactive armor, such as T90M or T80 BVM, which is extremely good since those tanks are entering service pretty soon and T90 MS is being sold to a lot of countries in North Africa and Middle East, which means they could fall in the hands of insurgents, in which instance this projectile would find a great use. But the problem is, when facing T-14 Armata, there is not much this would come in handy, since T-14 uses new explosive reactor armor, nicknamed Malahit. And on top of that, official sources state that just the crew capsule of T-14 is 900mm of world homogeneous armor equivalency. Which would mean, according to available information, MA-29A4 wouldn't be able to penetrate T-14, even without Malahit, not to mention with it. So what can Abrams do? Well, best it can do is shoot the turret, since the turret of T-14 offers protection only against autocannons and possibly old RPGs. So at best, when engaging T-14, facing front, best Abrams could do is disable the gun or firing mechanism. But there is still hope for Abrams. SEP 3 is said to receive upgraded armor, which would mean T-14 would have a hard time penetrating it. Official information of penetrating power of T-14 with new projectile is put somewhere around 1000 mm at 2 km. Current armor of M1A2 is rated at 960 mm against APFSDS. If armor gets significantly upgraded, that would mean SEP 3 could sustain fire from T-14. But unfortunately, it could still retain weak spots, such as the gun mantle at the center of the lower and upper glazes, since armored fuel tanks are positioned to both sides of the front hull. Another thing to note are APS systems for both tanks. M1A2 SEP-3 is definitely receiving a trophy active protection system, developed by Israel, which is combat proven, and is said to receive new APS developed by United States, but no additional information is available on when is that going to happen. T-14 uses Afghanit active protection system, which is said to be able to intercept APFSDS projectiles. It was said that upgrade for Trophy was being developed to allow it to do the same thing. Trophy is currently in advanced development against kinetic energy projectiles, as seen in this field test. But I couldn't find information if that version was put into service. But if it isn't, I'm sure we can expect it to in the following years. Maybe even before T-14 and SEP V3 enter service. Another issue Abrams faces is the constant increase in weight. Armata having crew stationed in the forward hull only and having low armored manless turret allowed the weight not to be drastically increased over previous Russian tanks, weighting 52 tons combat ready. M1A2 SEP V3 with new armor upgrade and other features could get close to 70 tons, which would start being an issue since it would prolong the preparation for and actual transport of the vehicles over long distances especially by rail, and the increase in weight would also reduce the maneuverability of the tank. Armata's engine being set to 1500 horsepower, same as the one of the Abrams, and weighting almost 15 tons less, would give it an advantage in maneuverability, especially since it can reach maximum speed of 75 to 90 km per hour, both forward and reverse. 
T-14 is definitely a better tank as a unit on the battlefield, especially with incorporation of ISA raiders and other high-tech features. But although it is better, it's not much better. M-2 Sepri-3 would still stand a chance against it and pose a big threat to Armata. And there is one thing T-14 falls behind a lot compared to Abrams. Availability. In the summer of 2016, Russian Ministry of Defense ordered 100 T-14 tanks from Ural Vagon Zavod. Last year it was announced that those tanks will be delivered by the end of 2019. That is three years for 100 tanks. Abrams on the other hand does not face those issues. There are currently over 1500 M-182 Sepv-2 tanks. When Sepv-2 entered service it took less than two years to upgrade all existing M-182 SEP tanks and also upgrade some older M-1A1 tanks to SEPV-2 with over 1500 SEPV-2 tanks in active service. When SEPV-3 enters service it won't be long until all existing SEPV-2 tanks are upgraded. It might take longer than two years as it was for SEPV-2 since the armor will be upgraded as well, but it won't take nearly as much as it would for T-14. Sure, the numbers produced per year will creep increasing, since it's a new tank, but it will never match the one of the Abrams. Russia has to rely on its semi-obsolete T-72 B3 tanks, since they are the most numerous in Russia right now, and although T-80 BVM is supposedly going to replace T-72 B3 tanks, it is still no match for newest tanks. T-90M is more of a match for new Abrams, but it too won't be producing great numbers, or at least it appears to be the case. But only time will tell. Another thing worth noting is that some tank might be better than one, it does not mean it would win. Modern battles aren't led tank on tank, but with combination of infantry, tanks, APCs, air force and a little bit of everything. These kinds of videos are probably informative and I hope you enjoyed. If you think I made a mistake, please correct me in the comment section in a civilized way. Those are just tanks. That being said, I want to announce that I have put up a Patreon, so any kind of support will be helpful. If you can't support me that way, no problem, just watching my videos is helpful enough, but the reason I've put up a Patreon is so I could bring better quality of the videos and get new books I could use to extract information for upcoming videos. As I said, anything you can spare would mean a lot. That is it, thanks for watching, I'll see you all in the next video and have a nice day.